transfer athletes bring the highest expectations. And have we reached the must-win portion of the men's basketball season already? Welcome to BYU Sports Station, presented by the BYU Store. Official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Friday, January 20th. This is how we do it. I am Spencer Linton alongside your tour guide on today's show, complete with cheesy jokes and all, Jerem Jordan. This is Brigham Young University, so we've got plenty of cheese for everybody. Tillamook is the cheese of the Jordan household. You would be an amazing tour guide on Jungle Cruise at Disneyland. That's your thank, personality. Thank you. <laughs> I hate that you said that and it's accurate. Um, yeah, okay, let's let's go. On today's uh, cheesy show, the nation's mm. leading rebounder, Lauren Gustin, joins the program after a dominating win on Kids Day record crowd against San Francisco. It was so fun to be there. BYU's newest All-American transfer, Eddie Heckard, is on the show. How he factors into our top transfer impact uh, players list. Cougars in the NFL, hoping to make the championship round after this weekend. And is singing happy birthday to yourself a 15-yard penalty? Hashtag I am Jack DeMooney. Here are today's headlines. BYU football, speaking of the transfers, adding FCS second-team All-American defensive back Eddie Heckard to yeah. the roster. A gift from Jay Hill and the transfer portal. Thank Heckard you, Weaver State. joins BYU with one year of eligibility remaining after his award-winning career at Weaver State. He'll be an immediate impact player, especially with the graduating D'Angelo Mandel and Gabe Judy Lally transferring away. Judy Lally, by the way, commits to Tennessee, joining former BYU linebacker Keenan Peely in Knoxville. Men's Hoops loses to Santa Clara last night, 83-76. Rudy Williams, 24 points off the bench. Cougars turned it over 19 times, 15 times in the first half. <sighs> Quad too long. Cougars play at San Francisco tomorrow on BYU Radio, CBS Sports Network. Radio pregame begins at 70. BYU women's basketball wins their seventh straight game after a rout of San Francisco. 78-59 on Kids Day that we just talked about at the Marriott Center. The 78 points are a season high for the Cougars, and they did it in front of a Marriott Center record crowd for a women's basketball game of 8,758. Yeah, baby. Lauren Gustin tied her single game career high in points at 27. She added a mere 19 rebounds. Mm -hmm. The Cougars will try and win their eighth straight tomorrow, hosting Santa Clara for Eastern live on BYU TV. Fun combo with uh, Lauren coming up. Cougars in the NFL divisional round. Andy Reid and the Chefs play Jack. If you know, you know the Snicks. Uh, Jacksonville Jaguars tomorrow afternoon. Fred Warren and the Niners play. How about them Cowboys? Sunday night should be a fun weekend of NFL uh, football. Great googly moogly. BYU women's gymnastics will host Boise State tonight in their Mountain Rim Gymnastics Conference opener. First home meet of the season, and because I promised Guard Young I'd talk about it, a daddy-daughter date night promotion involved no less. I'd be there, but working also. Yep. Nine different Cougars scored their career highs, at least in one event, during last week's Best of Utah meet. Coverage of the Gym Cats' third meet of the season begins at 9 Eastern tonight on BYU TV. Can Puka Nakua say the opening prayer? That'd be fun. Mm -hmm. Number 13, men's volleyball host Division II school Fairleigh Dickinson out of New Jersey tonight on the BYU TV app because gymnastics on BYU TV going at the same time, baby. Then tomorrow back on BYU TV, both at 9 Eastern time. BYU Track and Field finishes the first day of their three-day competition at the Ralph Lindemann Invitational at Air Force in Colorado Springs. Two-time All-American Dallin Borkink finished first in the shot put, and Ben Barton matched his personal best in the 60 meters. The meet runs through tomorrow, no pun intended. I, I think you should have intended it, and now we can, we can uh, pole vault with hats on? Is that a new thing? That's cool. Why not? I like it. If you feel comfortable, <laughs> that's great. Right. Tennis, the women have a blue and white scrimmage tomorrow at noon with the season starting back up next week at Weber State, uh, former home of uh, Eddie Hecker. Uh, the men's season resumes today against Idaho State in about an hour. BYU Swim and Dive beginning competition also in Colorado Springs at the Air Force Invitational. The meet I think they're going out to eat together? Maybe. The two. Yeah. 13 events today and 10 tomorrow with time for lunch in between, we think. <laughs> yeah, they can go, hey, hey, what's up? You're here too? That's great. Same hotel probably? A live stream will be available on the Air Force YouTube page. Do you think there's just random jets on that channel too? Like it's not just the athletics? I like, would probably like, watch dude, that if they just had like random awesome out. F-35 yes, jets yes. taking off and I'm in. doing Sub aerial maneuvers. Subscribe. All rise and shout. It is time for What's Trending. Oh, it's 
It's a terrific transfer transformation, or we hope it will be, for BYU football. On the heels of adding a second team AP All American at the FCS level and Eddie Hecker to Let's the go. defensive backs room, it's got us thinking. Okay, now that the transfer window has uh, window has closed for now, it'll open back up, but it's yep. closed for now. Yep. Who are the top three transfers that we have the highest expectations for? as they move to BYU football and help the Cougars go into the Big 12. We came up with this list independently of three, and we chose the exact three, I think in the same order, uh, which is Keaton Slovis, Aiden Robbins, Isaiah Bagnett. Yes. Right? Okay, yes. let's break it down. Keaton Slovis, a quarterback, he's got to be the best transfer BYU has. If he is, BYU's got a real shot at uh, obviously having a, uh, making a bowl, but maybe challenging for seven, eight wins. I don't know. Maybe let's get crazy. Maybe somehow BYU goes to nine in his first year of the Big 12. I don't know. Can you imagine having low expectations for the BYU quarterback? <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, um, going into the bowl game, we didn't know what to expect from Cade Fennigan or Bull J. Mayava yeah. Peters, and uh, they delivered in a nice way. It, it, that was a defensive game. Anyway, yeah. In that game, I was like, I don't know what sure. to expect. Let me rephrase. But we Can didn't you... have low. You're yeah. right. We just didn't know. Can you imagine having low expectations for a BYU quarterback during the offseason? We're like, yeah, probably going to stink <laughs> in that position. No, we feel confident that Keaton Slovis and Jake Retzloff and uh, Cade Fennigan and, and Ryder Burton and the gang can produce some goodness, okay? Specifically, early numbers from me, like 3K is the number you got to get to in college football. 3,000 passing yards. Assuming you're healthy like 90% of the year or whatever, like 27 touchdowns plus. I looked at 30. I was like, should it be 30? There's only been like 15 seasons where you had a 3,000 yard passer. Like, it's not as just automatic as you think. Um, so, yeah, like, uh, sorry, uh, 30 touchdowns, not sure. 3,000. Okay. 3,000, that's like left handed. Uh, you could do that <laughs> for everybody not named Steve Young and Riley Nelson. But 20, 30 touchdowns is a little hard. So, okay. something like that with Keaton. All right. So, you've added, you've attached a number to that. And I, and I like that. Early thoughts. Because I, I don't know. I, I have high expectations for him, but, yeah, what what uh, defines high expectations for Keaton Slovis? 3,000 is not that high to me, honestly. Like, high would be, like, 3,500. Do high. BYU fans expect Keaton Slovis to match a line like Jaron Hall had this year? I think the answer is yes. Because it's probably unfair. Like, Jaron Hall is one of the top 15 quarterbacks in the game. Do we feel like Keaton's going to be one of the top 15, 20 guys in college football? That's pretty ambitious. Absolutely. Uh, I think top 25 or 30 is probably a fair ask, top 30. And Keaton Slovis is not throwing to Puka Nakua in some of these right. scenarios, right? Doesn't have an NFL guy sitting there. Although, maybe some of those guys become NFL guys later. We're not ruling, Hill, not ruling that out yeah. at all. Yeah. But for me, yeah, the 3,000-yard mark feels like, okay, baseline for some form of success. As far as touchdowns go, I'm not so much worried about the number of touchdown passes as I am about the touchdown to interception ratio. Like if Keaton Slovis yes. throws 20 touchdowns and only has four or five interceptions, great. I'm looking yes. for a four or five to one touchdown to interception ratio. That's what yeah. Aaron Roderick values probably the most is ball security and smart decision making not turning yes. the ball over. Yes. So for me, that, that's what I'm looking at. I expect Keaton Slovis to be smart as a veteran with one year left to have a five or four to one touchdown to interception ratio. So whatever the number is, great. Just don't throw a lot of interceptions. Um, Jaron Hall and Zach Wilson in the last three seasons have combined for 14 total interceptions. That's amazing. That is stupid that's low. That's amazing. Now, I don't know that we can expect that number to stay the same. Hopefully, Keaton Slovis takes care of the ball. Now, back in the 80s and 90s, BYU would throw a ton of picks. Like, we forget this. They were cavalier. Ty Detmer was chucking it around it to everywhere. Miami. Yes. I think, my, I think BYU had like five turnovers uh, giveaways in the Miami game. Still one. You can overcome those things. But BYU was built to protect the ball. Again, there's influences from all over the place from a long time ago. But, like, I know people don't want to hear it. But guess what? I'd love for BYU to be what Utah is right now. Power 5 champ competing for a playoff spot, playing in big games. Let's get to that point. Utah protects the ball, runs the ball well, plays great defense, excellent special teams. Their offense has taken a step forward. That's why they've won the Pac-12 the last two years, because their offense is actually a threat. They actually got a good quarterback that makes plays. Like when they've had Alex Smith and Brian Johnson and Cam Rice, they're pretty good. Bury's always had the good quarterback, always had the good offense. You take care of the ball and you have good defense, now you have something. Can BYU combine those two? Remember 2012 and 13, BYU had like, 
excellent defenses. Not just excellent, elite Offenses defenses. weren't good enough. It was young, Taysom and Jamal figuring it out, rushed for a million yards in 2013, but you played seven power fives. You weren't ready for that schedule. 2012, amazing, amazing defense, like seven NFL guys on that side or something. Giving up under 14 a game. Off- yes, the offense wasn't good enough. Can BYU's offense be good enough? Which brings us to the number two player on our list, Aiden Robbins. Absolutely. UNLV, I'm expecting 1,000 yards and 10 touchdowns. Like, (laughs) if Chris Brooks had been healthy all year, I think he puts up those numbers. I think we expect a similar output, but obviously, hopefully, a full season of health for Aiden Robbins. 82-ish, 84 yards a game over a 12-game slate. Throw in a 13th if you go to a bowl game, which we – our hopeful we, we BYU sure will do, yeah. right? 83.3 is the That's number. the minimum threshold of success in yeah. terms of the wins and losses. Yeah, get to a bowl game. Even beat, in year one of the Big 12? Beat five FBS teams. Okay. okay. Go, go bowling. Aiden Robbins, yes. I expect him to be a 1,000-yard rusher. We want four Big 12 wins minimum because we're expecting Sam Houston and Southern Utah to be wins. That's what we're asking for. I, four of I the don't nine. think that's too much to ask of this BYU team. I don't think so either. With yeah. Keaton Slovis at quarterback and – All the experience he has as a Power 5 quarterback. By the way, he says he's already developing a great rapport with the receivers. And has specifically pointed out, I'm super impressed with how detail-oriented they are in their route running, their precision, and just their work ethic. So, some good things already being developed. Like to hear that. Love it. Aiden Robbins is going to be a 1,000-yard guy. Like So, with those guys, our, our top two impact transfers that we have discussed thus far in play, I don't think six wins is too much to ask. No, 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 no. It's minimum. It's minimal. But we're scared of being ambitious after last year, and we don't know what the Big 12 is going to offer in terms of resistance, right? Maybe BYU is the TCU. I'm not saying go to the national championship game, but the we don't know what they do, and then boom, they're really competitive in that league. I want BYU to have a scenario where in the red zone, inside the three-yard line, they feel like, we're going to hand it to Aiden Robbins three times in a row, and one of these times, he's at, at worst, he's going to break in and one we of these We did not plays. feel that way last year, no. and that was frustrating. That's an expectation I have. Amen. Is inside the three-yard line, BYU can feel confident behind their offensive line that they can hand it to Aiden Robbins, big physical running back, like BYU did with Harvey Unga and others, and he can run into the end zone yes. and, get, and score a touchdown. Yes. So you say 10 touchdowns? I want him to score. I want him to average one touchdown a game. A million touchdowns. Right? I want Let's him to go. average one touchdown a game. Yeah. Okay? So I'd 12, 13. I would love Those that. That's not crazy. Let's go. Okay. Third transfer, Jerem. Yes. And I wasn't Lead sure about there. this one because Eddie Heckard is the recency bias. Like yes. he's a second team All American. He's gonna he's gonna be an immediate impact player for Gennaro Guilford's room. It's tough to like burst onto the scene and like have just like this game changing effect as a defensive back by nature of the position unless you're intercepting well, the ball once we, a game or may, maybe he's a special dude that we haven't seen in a minute okay. i don't know okay. BYU's always had some good players don't get me wrong i don't want to discredit what they've done but has BYU, BYU always had one nfl defensive back drafted since the 90s yes you know, it, chris wilcox, yes, chris wilcox Trent, like barely in then there then you got to go back to derwin Gray. yes maybe eddie hellard i mean heckard <laughs> is the guy Maybe, maybe he is the guy. He will allow, we think, because of what he did at Weber State, yeah. BYU to be more unique in their defensive formations and packages. Perhaps. And blitz schemes. They're going to throw him out on an island against some really good receivers in the yes, first 12. Yes, yes. So may, maybe he is the answer as the third impact transfer. But we chose someone else. I want it to be this guy, Jerem. I want it to be Isaiah Bagnett. Amen, man. Amen. Helping out that BYU defensive line. Edge rusher. Kelly Papinga and the BYU defense, Jay Hill, they're really excited about this guy and the prospect of what he could do. And they feel like we haven't had a guy like him at BYU in a minute. So, I would agree. Okay. Backs from the edge have not been a big deal at BYU. I, in fact, we've been told, uh, no, they just eat blocks in the back of the – no, edge rushers get sacks. Come I on. want him to be the guy. Yes. Uh, and so maybe, it's, maybe that's why I'm like, uh, probably is hope. Eddie Heckard, but – yeah. I want it to be Isaiah Bagman. We hope he has the tongue of the learned. We hope he has four-plus sacks. We hope he has eight-plus tackles for loss and leads the team in both. Which, by the way, this year, John Nelson, three sacks, led the team. Too low for an individual that plays that much. Um, but John's young. That was a good number for him. Tyler Batty led with seven tackles for loss. What are 
need double digit tackles for loss, guys. Yeah. Where's Kyle Van Noy had like 44 and a half. He's an all timer, <laughs> but like 44 and a half. Let's go. Can we go five sacks and 10 tackles for loss? I would take it right now. Come on. Okay, topic two. Is tomorrow night's men's hoops game at San Francisco a must win already for oh. BYU's NIT resume? I hate talking about NIT resume, but we got to do it right now. Yeah, well, and we have to do it on the heels of a frustrating loss against Santa Clara, Yeah, right? One that we kind of saw coming. Santa Clara's pretty good. <laughs> I, I love the must win conversation because we're in the middle of conference play. I know, but World, World War II was must win. We are looking at what's available for BYU in terms of signature wins. Yep left on the schedule, there aren't many games out there. Does the NIT care about signature wins, or is it just volume of wins? I don't know. Are they looking at the net well, and what, they care what, about your Ken Paul? Like, I don't well, know. They, I'm sure they care about the net and to a degree like, because kind of? it's like the best teams that just miss out on the NCAA tournament. Right, and it's not just, hey, if you had 22 wins, you're in. It's like, well, it depends what league you played in, right? Yes. Like, WCC, and if you get 20 you something beat. Wins, BYU has some nice wins yeah. on the resume. They have enough to get in the NIT Creighton, in terms of quality. Dayton, Utah, I feel like they need a good win in conference. Okay, I was looking They'll at this get last it. night. They'll get it. BYU has beaten all four of the wins in conference play, Jerem, have come against teams that have worse records in league play than BYU right now. Okay. So the games you should win. The three losses that BYU has in conference have all come against teams that have better records than, than them in the WCC. San Francisco has a worse record than BYU, but it's a quad two game, and this allows BYU to split a really tough Bay Area road trip. So the urgency is there for me. It's not yeah. a must win. Like for but, what? The NIT? Yeah. No. No. Like there, there are a few more opportunities because BYU plays St. Mary's twice in Gonzaga, and they get to host Santa Clara and San Francisco. Like there are more games that BYU can win, yep. but I do feel the urgency because if BYU loses this game to San Francisco – then they got to come home and host St. Mary's. And now the Cougars are looking at potentially a three-game losing streak and now going into a losing record territory in the WCC. One of the best teams in the country coming in next Saturday. BYU needs to walk into Vegas with at least 19 wins to me. That needs, means they need to go 5-4 and four in the uh, final nine here. 20 means typically means uh, NIT for BYU. The average the last five appearances since 2013 in the NIT of wins walking into the postseason mm -hmm. is 22 yeah. for BYU. So, um if BYU can finish uh, with the, with you know that record down the stretch, nine and seven gets you about fourth or fifth, typically fifth, and then uh, you go to the NIT. By the way, NYC buckets, BYU's in, but on the bubble as a Monday. On the Resource, bubble. Resource Nexus has BYU as a seven seed. The Barking Crow, whatever that is, doesn't have BYU <laughs> as of Monday. The Barking Crow. I hate looking up How NIT bracketology. The Barking Crow not have BYU in the NIT bracketology. One of my favorite Jack Handy phrases. <laughs> the crows are calling my name, thought Ka. <laughs> <laughs> so ay, ay, ay. Not a must win, but man, it, it would certainly. If BYU win. doesn't win Saturday, it's over. I, I picked them uh, to go 19 and 12 in our preseason projections. That's so what they're, they're, they're right on they're par. Right they're right, on, they're right yeah. on track for that. I hate that you were right. Uh, <laughs> our question of the day is this going back to BYU football. Oh, yeah. On the heels of. An AP All-American, second teamer coming over from Weaver State to BYU. It's not the second team part. Eddie AP All-American. AP All-American. I love it. I love it. Which of the BYU football transfers do you have the highest expectations for? At Caleb.j.mckay answers on Instagram. If it's not Keaton Slovis, it's Aiden Robbins. Yeah. yeah. I expect him to be a bruiser. Mm -hmm. He is the only running back on the roster who is capable of a thousand yards right now. If he doesn't have a big year, BYU will be in for a long season trying to rely on Slovis's arm alone. Yeah, you never want to do that, even if that player's Jaron Hall or Zach Wilson. You need some balance, right? Yeah, the one dynamic uh, is not a good thing. You yeah, know? yeah. no matter how good one that – trick pony. Ask the Buccaneers no. how that worked with no run game, right, with the greatest quarterback <sighs> of all time. Yep. Check out the BYU Gymnastics home opener tonight against Boise State, 9 Eastern time on BYU TV. Guard Young uh, also asked me. No, he didn't. Uh, Daddy Daughter Night. Let's mm -hmm. go, baby. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a fun night. The nation's top rebounder in women's basketball is Lauren Gustin. Hey. She's one-on-one -on -one with Jerem Jordan in studio. Yeah, rebounded me. I'll just tell you that. Yeah, she's probably going to have uh, 10 points, 10 rebounds. She'll have a 30-20. But before she's done. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> Domination. <laughs> This is BYU Sports Day.
Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork offers a large inventory of Ford vehicles, including a selection of cars and trucks, providing a range of transportation choices. From the Ford Fusion sedan and the Edge crossover SUV to a range of pickups, including the F-150. Each product line comes with options to enhance performance, comfort, and safety. Think Ford, think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Why are you here then? I, I stammer. No one can fix it. Aren't you going to start treating me? Only if you're interested in being treated. Your methods are always unorthodox and controversial. Long live the king. I'm trying to get you to realize you needn't be governed by fear. Get up, you can't sit there. Listen to me! Why should I waste my time listening? Because I have a voice! Yes, you do. Lauren Gustin is still awesome and will be awesome for a very long time. <laughs> she is putting up just insane numbers on the basketball court. And with that, we welcome you back to Studio B for more of your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I am Spencer Linton alongside Jaron Jordan. Lauren Gustin uh, joined us earlier today and uh, she was getting ready for practice. So she's ready to go, like in <laughs> shorts, ready to go to practice. She had such a great game yesterday. Here's my conversation with the number one rebounder in the country, Lauren Gustin. All right, Lauren, welcome to Studio B. It's the new one. Uh, it's a, a new look uh, version. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's, it's looking nice. Can you hear okay after yesterday's game with uh, <laughs> the kids? Uh, yeah, the halftime was rough. That's when it got real loud, I feel like. <laughs> it was a record crowd, which was pretty special uh, in BYU history. Last year, uh, the Gonzaga game and now the record crowd. What was it like to play in that game yesterday? Um, yeah, I think the kids brought, you know, a lot of energy. So it was kind of fun to be able to pick up from that and... Uh, it was just a fun atmosphere, you know, to be able to have a bunch of fans, obviously. And um, so, I mean, kids' games are always really loud, but they're fun. What's the best part of that, and then what's the most challenging part of that? Um, I think we just have to focus. I mean, the most challenging part would be communication-wise. We have to, like, talk really loud. and Even at a home game. Yeah, and make sure we kind of relay the message. Um, and then I think it's fun just to kind of feed off their energy, um, especially those morning games. Um, it's kind of, it's a little tougher to get going, you know, just because we're not used to playing um, our games in the morning. So it's nice to have the kids to uh, feed off that. <laughs> and they were juiced. And what they give them is cougar <laughs> tails. And so it just goes to another level. Uh, I even took my two kids. Uh, mm -hmm. You were nice enough to talk to them after. That was really fun. Take a picture. 27 points, 19 rebounds. Um, I felt like we were going for a 30-20. <laughs> were you aware of kind of how close you were to something special in BYU history there? Um... I mean, a little bit towards the end, yeah, um, but um, during the game, I just tried to, you know, focus on just trying to get the lead up and um, get the win, but towards the end, yeah, I was, um, I was like, I'm a little, almost there, but. You're almost there. Not that a 27-19 is not special, uh -huh. but uh, a 30-20, um, you know, I'm told it's, it's uh, Jackie, Jackie Bean McBride and mm -hmm. uh, it's Tina Gunn Robison um, from like the late 70s. Do you understand kind of how special <laughs> it is what you're doing right now? Like, do you? Are you are you in the moment too much to not appreciate it because you're like this opponent this mm -hmm. game or do you do you have an appreciation for what you and your team are accomplishing right now? Um, I think definitely just in the moment, just trying like for example, right now I'm like let's we got a we got Santa Clara on Saturday. Like literally, you're in shorts ready to practice. <laughs> yeah, if I got filming here shortly, so yeah, just um, I think it's I mean something about the season too is you you know game after game. So right for this one, you know we got filmed this morning on Santa Clara prep for them game tomorrow. So um, it's nice to be able to appreciate the wins, you know the day of and whatnot. But we got to get our minds right for Santa Clara. Uh, I'll talk to you about Santa Clara in just a second, but did want to ask you about the seven-game win streak. Mm -hmm. um, Coach yesterday, Whiting, uh, on the show said, hey, it's easy to get soft because you're winning. Yeah. Um, but she said 
she feels like you guys are pretty focused. You're allowing 49.7 points per game right now. Like, that's a stupid number. Yeah. You're going to win every game um, if that's the kind of defense you're putting up. And I know Coach Whiting came in and said, we play defense first. You're a good defensive player. How has this team sort of embraced that to where, hey, that's turned the season around here? Yeah. Um, I mean, right from the start, Coach was always like, I'm a, you know, defense, defense, defense. And I think, uh, I mean, we worked really hard on it in the summer, but I think now it's starting to come together and kind of show um, – in the game, so we've been prepping for it. We've been working hard on the defensive end, but I think now we can finally, you know, we're playing better. We're playing better together as a team. Our chemistry is going better, so I think defense is just finally being able to show and you know imp implement into our play. But we've been working on it from day one. Give me some of the X's and O's of what great defense looks and feels like from your perspective when it happens. Mm -hmm. um, I think well, I f think for starters, communication is so so important. Um, and then one thing that I like that our coach really talks about is we all are, it's almost like we're all on a string moving together. Um, you know, if we have to have help side, then there has to be the help, the help, the helper, you know. So I think everyone just kind of being on one page and being connected is, I think, the most important thing for defense. And then, uh, like coach always says, just being tough. Um, you know, we're going to be the more, the more aggressive and tougher team out there on the court. Yet there's offense, uh, season yeah. high 78. Um, what did it feel like to uh, get a few more buckets than you've, you guys have had this season. Yeah, I think we're really sharing the ball really well right now. Um, I mean, Nani and Ari both had, what, six assists yesterday? Uh, so I think that just comes from everyone just being unselfish and, you know, um, making the extra pass and looking for each other. Um, so I think it's – I mean, in practice this week, we had a really great practice of sharing the ball and um, I think really focusing on um, executing our plays, which I feel like we're doing better now too. We're talking to Lauren Gustin here on BYU Sports mm -hmm. Nation, the nation's number one <laughs> leading rebounder. There's somewhere between 5,000 and 5,500 college basketball players on the women's side. Mm -hmm. And you're the number one rebounder. What's that like? <laughs> uh, I mean, it's, it's awesome. For, I mean, it's, it's a great honor. But um, I, I just love trying to go for the boards and, and, you know, all that stuff. So I think that um, it's just I like the aggressive side of things. So I think it's fun that it you know, comes with being aggressive and just going after every board. Um, but, I mean, it's awesome. It's a great honor. I just you know, want to keep winning, keep doing whatever it takes to get the win, so. When uh, did you embrace rebounding? How old were you? Mm -hmm. um, I think from a young age, uh, just growing up, I feel like I always liked just being physical, having two older brothers, you know, um, right from the start. It was always like physical and aggressiveness. Are you the brothers. youngest? I'm the middle child, the middle. but um, yeah, middle child, younger sister, younger brother as well. Um, and then I think as I got older, um, I kind of stopped growing, so I wasn't the tallest kid, you know, but I was. So you got tall quick? Yeah, I got tall quick, and then I kind of stopped growing. I was just done at 5'11", 6 foot, um, and I had always played the five growing up. So I kind of had to learn different, I feel like, strategies and advantages for that because I wasn't, you know, really the tallest anymore. Um, so I just decided, you know, I'm going to really try to bring the intensity on, you know, the rebound side of things. So offense, defense, my mindset is just I'm going to go for every single board. <laughs> Obviously, we've known about your brother Porter for a long mm -hmm. time, uh, lo local amazing uh, player that played at USC and in the NFL. Where has he uh, last been, by the way? So he's with the Dolphins right now. With the Dolphins. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And they had a great year. They mm -hmm. were tremendous. Um, and then uh, I assume your siblings, all of them are athletic. Your parents, I think, both played college basketball. Yeah. Your mom here. Yeah. What did your dad play? And my dad played football at Wyoming. And football at mm -hmm. Wyoming. Oh, I, I think I looked this up. I think he played one game against BYU. Back yeah, yeah. Then. Okay. Um, that sort of athletic heritage. Mm -hmm. When you were younger, was sports always a big deal? Was like getting in the weight room? Because I know you big in yeah. the weight room. Was that always a thing that you did and that you liked, or did you have to come around to that? Um, yeah, sports for sure was always a thing. I remember um, from a young age always having, you know, my little, my, I mean, my older brother's games we were running around to, or my games, and waking up on the weekends was always getting ready for football games. And um, so sports was always a big part of my life, especially having parents that played college sports. Um, always pushed us in sports which you know I'm so grateful for uh, as far as the weight room I remember I think I was like 14 uh, 15 my my older cousin who played basketball um, she wanted me to go live with her and I really did not want to I really didn't enjoy it but my dad always wanted me to go um, and then it didn't happen until I was about 16 that I loved loved the weight room um, it took me a little bit to kind of start liking it but then from age 16 I felt like I was it was definitely became like an obsession so how did you become obsessed with it um I think I just started to realize just I think I really liked the process of it and just how it like just 
the whole process of how your body works when you're lifting. And uh, I was just really interested by all the science and stuff behind that. And then also just having an older brother who was always putting in the work in the mm -hmm. weight room. Um, he was a beast. Yeah, he constantly be, yeah. and just kind of seeing, um, seeing that and him develop through that was always really um, inspiring. There was a point where uh, he may have had longer hair than you. <laughs> yeah. At USC, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, he grew that out. <laughs> it looked good. It was it was flowing. It was picking up passes and second quarterbacks. It was great. Um, when and and when you were 16 and you you embraced the weight room, mm -hmm. when did kind of college basketball become a reality for you? Because you've had an interesting journey here with mm -hmm. what Idaho and Salt Lake Community College. Yeah. And, and you played in Arizona, I think, mm -hmm. right in high school a little bit. Yeah. Um, I think my junior year of high school. Uh, that's when I moved to Arizona for that one year. I was able to play with Shaylee and um, did you guys win state? Yes, we did. Yeah. Nice. Of course yeah. you did. <laughs> uh, and I think that summer is kind of when basketball became um, a lot more intense. That's when I started playing. I think year round with the club and our high school workouts were um, summer lifts in the morning and then practice in the evening. So uh, it definitely became more intense then, and that's when I kind of started. You know, that's when the recruiting process kind of started up and whatnot. So definitely in junior year. That's awesome. Okay, Santa Clara comes in tomorrow uh -huh. afternoon, another big game. Um, early thoughts on the Broncos in another game you're trying to extend mm -hmm. this win streak with. Yeah, um, I think every team's coming out giving us their best shot, um, regardless of their record. And Santa Clara is always, you know, a good team. They're always, um, they always push a lot in transition. So, uh, yeah, we just got to come prepared tomorrow, um, be locked in today, have a great day of practice, uh, be dialed in in film, and, yeah, hopefully um, – able to continue our, our winning streak. Okay, well, best of luck with everything. It's fun to watch you play, yeah. and the team's winning and doing great, and uh, thanks for the time. Good luck at practice today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> our thanks to Lauren Gustin for joining us this morning, and uh, for Eastern Time tomorrow on BYU TV, you can watch the Cougars take on the Broncos. You can watch your every game, Spence. Like, unbelievable. What we're watching is truly special. In yes, the Dave McCann says she's must-see television. I agree. She, she has earned that designation. Like, when are, not since Kyle Collinsworth have we been like excited to watch rebounds. You know what I mean? Yeah, he like, was, he was oh, that's Mr. 17. Triple double, that's right? 18. But with her, it's like, is she going to get to 20? She's 20 like and 20. challenging that it's, every game. It's the last, always like, the, the chase for 2020. And yesterday yep. she came out of the game with a little more than a minute to play. She's looking up at the board and I could, I could read her lips. She's like, I need one more rebound. There was a rebound <laughs> that a teammate grabbed <laughs> that could have gone to it her. It would have been 27 and 20. That's okay. That's all right. Jeremy, over the last four games, she's averaging more than 21 rebounds a game. That's incredible. This is unbelievable. That's amazing. If you uh, came to pick up with me, you would get that amount as well from all my bricks. <laughs> Men's volleyball is back at the Smith Fieldhouse tonight, 9 Eastern time on the BYU TV app, taking on Fairly Dickinson. Gavin Julian looking to block a fool tonight against the FDU Knights. And up next, is singing happy birthday to yourself allowed? I mean, should, should should we throw some flags on I, that? I, th I think we've got to talk about it. We're going to discuss it next on BYU Sports Day. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. If you're looking to build your brand awareness and increase market share as BYU moves into the Big 12, this is the place, BYU, BYU Athletics. Athletics. We can provide the tools you need to make sure your company is seen and heard. BYU Athletics is where you can align your products and services with loyal fans that cheer for our Cougars. And they can also help your business win. Learn more about what a partnership with BYU Athletics and your company will look like. After all, this is the place. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. They prefer to be bringing the heat. Getting set for success demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again. And you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics.
before I was a coach at BYU or before I was even a player, I was a BYU fan. We've got great energy as a team, but we have even better energy because of our fans, and it's absolutely magical. When you hear the crowd roar, that makes it more exciting, more of an adrenaline rush. The roar of the crowd, you can feel it on the floor, you can feel that energy, and it's unlike anywhere else in the country. BYU Sports, it's all about the fans. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Follow the show on social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, and Twitter. He is Jerem Jordan. I am Spencer Linton. You know what time it is. Let's whip it! Cougar Whip Round presented by Marisk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Is Lauren Gustin the best athlete on campus? Yes. Who's like, better? Is she the best At her player? sport. Yeah. Like in, in any of the sports I'm on campus right now. I'm athleticism, although she's right there. I'm just talking like she is the best BYU player currently. Because if you're like, well, what about Jaron Hall and Puka and Blake? Those dudes are now on campus. Those guys are training for the NFL. I think the other two athletes that have a case are both from BYU women's soccer, and it's because they were just named All-Americans. All Americans. Yeah. Brecken Mazingo and Jamie Shepard. Great soccer banquet the other they night, were, by the way. They put on a good party. They were fantastic. Yeah. They are, they are, I mean, at another level. But what Lauren is doing individually, like, she's the top rebounder in the country. Jeremy, she's going to be an All-American. Yeah. 100%. Lauren Gustin will be an All-American, so she will I think be she's on that level. I think she's number one. There's some amazing track athletes and runners as well, some amazing all over BYU. This is one of the – out of the fall, they were number three Yeah. the Director's yeah, Cup. Cr Cross like, Country's got some unbelievable athletes as well. Yes, but there's not a Connor Mance Whitney Orton sitting there. Casey Klinger was amazing, right? But he's done. Um, yeah, I think she's the best. It's an interesting conversation. We're spoiled with just the wealth of incredible Olympic sports athletes at BYU. Right? You and I call most of those games. We really appreciate that wow. they're good. Trust me. How about Gonzaga finally losing a home game in men's basketball against that, LMU of all teams? Does that bring a smile to my face unknowingly? Are we happy for LMU or are we just bitter that BYU missed out on a game they should have won? I wouldn't say I'm bitter, but I am still disappointed that BYU didn't finish the deal there. But yeah, LMU's program continues to rise under Stan Johnson. I'm happy for Stan Johnson. From and Taylorsville. Yes. One of us. Yes, yes. I, I like Stan Johnson. Uh, interviewed him, talked to him at length during media days Good in dude. Las Vegas. He is an amazing human being. Yeah. Like very yes, on point. Yes, I really like that yeah. guy. So I was super happy for him. And I like that the conference race is now kind of, it feels a little wide open. Right? Like, well, I, I wish BYU was the clear three, but right now they're fine. Uh, they got to win. They got to beat San Francisco. Yes, they do. Uniform Authority gave BYU the best blackout jersey, fourth best whiteout, second best monochrome uniform of the season. <laughs> Better bragging rights, that or the Stone Cold Sober School every year? Jerem, nothing is going to beat. <laughs> How many years in a row of Stone Cold Sober? I think sober? since 1847 <laughs> when uh, Brigham Young showed up here. When you're number one in that category for so long, that's we crazy. need to embrace what BYU is. We know what we, we are. We need to wave that we flag, and we need to drink the chocolate milk every day it gets renewed. Yeah. Yeah. We need to drink chocolate milk I, more often, period. I love the uniform swag. That is awesome. <laughs> if it meant losing Stone Cold Sober status in that number one spot for years, Listen, I, I wouldn't want to lose that. If we lose Stone Cold Sober, <laughs> there's going to be some issues in Salt Lake. I'll tell you that right, right now. Hey, uh, a happy belated happy birthday to our Uncle Jack DeMooney. Hashtag Love I am Jack DeMooney. Jack. Hey, Jack DeMooney. I am Jack DeMooney. Yes. However, uh, does he deserve a penalty of sorts yeah. for singing happy birthday to himself? Listen to this. He does. Listen. Happy, happy birthday, Jack, dear. Happy days will come to you. <laughs> to me from me? A happy, happy birthday to yeah. me from me. Yeah. We're no, throwing yeah. the flags. We're throwing the flags. Come Sorry. on. No, that's a 15-yarder. Next one, you're out of the game. Just play the song. Let everybody else sing Happy it. birthday to me from me.
Have you, when when people sing happy birthday to you, like your family, are you singing along like saying happy birthday to me? No, I just sit there me. awkwardly and hate it. Like, I hate being sung to in that moment. Maybe he doesn't want to feel awkward, so maybe that's his way to play out of it. Yeah, I don't maybe, know. Maybe. I don't but know. Jack's going to Jack. It's it's throwing the flag. It's all good. Coming up, women's hoops looks to make it eight straight wins tomorrow for Eastern. Watch the nation's leading rebounders. We talked about Lauren Gustin as the Cougars take on Santa Clara tomorrow afternoon on BYU TV. Up next. He pushed pause on chasing his NFL dreams, and he's coming to BYU for hey. one more year. Eddie Heckard in studio next, the All-American defensive back on BYU Sports Nation. Heck you. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Those who leave the most meaningful legacy seem to be the ones who never intended to. The same person who loses himself seems to be the same that finds himself. And why? Well, they give the best of who they really are with no thought of return. Find a cause you can put your heart into, my son, in which to lose yourself. I started the Deseret Donor Advised Fund for this reason. Because in the end, my greatest legacy is you. is going to be something else. You have to be able to break through those hard moments when it hurts the most. Whatever you think you're capable of is true. You're a fighter. Hold your head up. You know what you're capable of. We're all proud of you. That's what makes a champion. Let's go! Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation live on a Friday. This is how we do it. Your day-to-day -day BYU sports play-by-play -play alongside Jerem Jordan. I'm Spencer Linton, and we are pleased to welcome in the now newest member of the BYU football team. He is Eddie Heckard, an All-American defensive back transferring from Weber State now to play one more year at BYU. Eddie, welcome to BYU Sports Nation. Up, Eddie? Thank you for having me. Um, I'm excited to be here and be a part of this University. Hey, that smile is yeah. contagious. Yeah. BYU fans are stoked. Uh, just from a social media standpoint, what was uh, your life like over the last uh, day or so when that announcement came out and the social media love that's pouring in? Yeah, I mean, I like it. It's overwhelming, though. Like, um, <laughs> the fan, a lot of fans are following me. I, I just get you know, a lot of likes and retweets on everything. Something that, um, I mean, Weaver doesn't have a big fan base like. BYU, but I mean, I'm gonna like this. I'm gonna like it during the season, seeing all those fans in the state. Absolutely, it's gonna be awesome. And and honestly, Weber State fans are super passionate. They've enjoyed some real success with Jay Hill, with yourself, because yeah. you've had a, a a journey here with six years at Weber State, right? And now right. a seventh college season, red shirt and medical red shirt and COVID and whatnot. And and I just feel like BYU's benefited from the awesomeness that has been Weber State the last couple of years. What are you most proud of from the Big Sky titles and the NCAA tournaments uh, and, and everything that you guys accomplished that you hope to kind of bring down here with Jay Hill, with Fessy, who was there a couple years ago? Um, just like that winning culture. Um, I mean, of, of course, BYU always won as well, but um, I just feel like since we've, I, me, Jay Hill, and Fessy, we all won championships together. Um, winning is contagious like and it's it can become a habit like just like losing can so the fact that we was winning and like it's something that it's a culture thing as well and all the coaches here have 
some ties together. So it's like they know each other's culture, and that's why I feel like even all of the whole state of Utah football is successful and like good. It's not like no terrible teams in yep. Utah. So. Yep. In 2021, it was uh, the state with the most top 25 teams finished. And yeah, because Utah State had a great year. BYU had a great year. Of course, yeah. Utah had a great year. And, and then you look at the coaching staff and you mention it. Almost everybody has some connection to an FCS school. Right. It's not like they're just, uh, you know, hoity-toity, we're all power five guys here. No, this is Kalani spent time at uh, Southern Utah right. Right? and in uh, Eastern Arizona and whatnot. So that, that matters. What do you feel like you're bringing to BYU uh, in terms of not only talent, but like you said, the culture to, as BYU embarks on the, the Big 12 for the first time? Um, I think I bring just like an, another member of, of the family. I feel like I could tell just by seeing the players, even though I don't know them too well, like I could fit in with them. And it's like not too many like people I feel like I um, I have to search for just from being in at Weber State with um, players that's played with these other players. Like yeah. I hear about people going to Long Peak, and I had teammates that went to Long Peak, and just from my freshman years, like, and a lot of Utah high school players stay in Utah, so I've always heard about some of these players mm -hmm. as well. Uh, I think I just can fit in the culture and not not be too much of a difference. Um, <laughs> yeah. Our arms are wide open. And being a Vegas kid, like, hey, you're not too far away. Right. Vegas kids on the team as well. You mentioned before the interview, you know Miles Davis. Uh, right, a little yeah. Bit already in yeah, me and Miles worked out together. Nice. Been, awesome. Been, I hosted him on his visit to Weber State. So, oh, there you yeah. go. Okay. Right. Did he host you on a visit here? Or? Nah. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Nah. Come on, Miles. Come on, Miles. Come on, baby. Oh, uh, we kid. <laughs> Eddie Heckard is with us on BYU Sports Nation. All-American defensive back coming from Weber State to BYU. You have NFL aspirations, and rightly so. You have played some elite-level football. Why push pause on that for now and choose BYU over jumping into the NFL game? Um, I just felt like I needed to complete my last year of um, eligibility. I was going to leave one on the table. And down the line, I didn't want to regret it, have any regrets as far as I should have played that last year. Then there was also Coach Hill that – helped it like even more just because it was like perfect time and where I felt like I wanted to go to the NFL and then now I'm coming to Power 5 school with a coach that recruited me yeah. and it's up my draft stock and put some more like you know guaranteed money in my pocket if I'm a draft pick instead of a free agent sure or like if I get the chance so that's why it wasn't a hard decision, but it was for a long, like, it wasn't a hard decision knowing where I was going to go as far as BYU or wherever, but it's a hard decision, like, coming back to college for sure, a little bit. Sure, sure. Yeah. You must really like Jay then. Yeah. And most people do, it seems. <laughs> and then you knew, you knew Fessy as well, it sounds like. It right, yeah. What was the relationship there? Um, so Fessy was the first coach I've seen at Weber State, like, when – I got recruited. Out of high school? Yeah, out of, out of high school. He, I remember to this day, like, talking to him in my counselor's office. And, yeah, it was just <laughs> like. a long relationship. Yeah, and it was my only offer. So it was like, uh, I know they showing me love. They loved so you first. Now, yeah. I, like, I always remember that. And always got love for Fessy. Absolutely. You know, I, Everybody loves Fessy, too. Yeah. yeah. Super cool. When did the prospect of joining BYU football, like, become a real possibility for you? Like, how, how, how many weeks ago are we talking? Like, when, when did this the conversation really start? Um, I would say, so. I mean, I don't know the exact dates or when I chose to declare for the draft. Like, after I made that post, I would say, like, a week or, a week or two after that is when I, like, kind of found out that I was – oh, I kind of knew that I wasn't going to uh, – pursue it all the way because of what scouts were telling me and agents so I would say that's when I okay. thought to, like okay maybe I should hop in the portal and see like what power five offers I could get okay what do you need yeah. to do to get into that space yeah what was the feedback you got um the feedback from scouts mm -hmm. and well they were just telling me some scouts were telling me like I mean playing at the FCS level um it's hard to draft a five nine corner from 
the FCS. Um, think you should use your last year and um, go play Power Five football and show like they believe. They said they believe I could play, but it's just hard to pitch that to the head coach and the owners or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it was that. Um, that's really what it was, and the agents, and that made it hard for like agents yeah. to um, gotcha. invest in me. A little as more far film as where I train. at this level. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, so we learned from another transfer, Paul Miley, who's mm -hmm. a center from the University of Utah, that he's like, I was in the transfer portal for like two minutes, and then Kalani Satake called me. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So was this a similar scenario where like you hop in a transfer portal and Jay's like, Hey, what's up? No, nah, I had talk. to end up telling him. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. So I um, don't. I know what he. I know what um, Mile is talking about though. As far as, as soon as you get in, it's like right now. Like I got in, and 20 minutes later, I was posted on this page, transfer portal, and then now it's all these schools following me, and it was just it was different. That, <laughs> that transfer portal was different. What's it like? Are you talking like DMs, texts, phone calls, emails? Uh, no, no phone calls because I didn't have my number on there anywhere, but um. DMs, it's like notifications, like DMs, message requests, uh, Instagram from Instagram and Twitter, and it's like just a lot of, it was a lot. You loving that or is that annoying? Is it do uh, not disturb or you take it off? I, I liked it at first because yeah. I wasn't recruited heavy out of high school. Right. And then I got annoying knowing like, <laughs> you know, some schools that you knew you, I wasn't, I, I wasn't going to go to, like, I might as well stay at Weber State. Like, I'm sure. good, so-and-so. Yeah, 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 but yeah. They, they had to recruit me, so I respected it. Like, yeah. Of course, you're going to send your shot. Yep. Uh, Eddie, it takes a unique personality and mindset to be a defensive back. Like right. I, I have always admired the swagger and the confidence that defensive backs have because a lot of times, in a lot of cases, you feel like you're the lone man out on the island. Mm -hmm. So why do you feel like – like what, what makes you want to play that position, and specifically at BYU – Going into the Big 12 where you know you're going to face some elite-level receivers. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm always up for a challenge. Um, I've been playing it my whole life. Uh, it's not it's not easy, and that's what makes it fun. Like, knowing when, when you're successful at it, when you, like, get an All-American title or been All-Conference, like, it, it, like, makes the work you put in to get there – even more enjoyable and like makes you want to train even more and harder so now going into the big 12 i i feel like a freshman again um you know it's time to work again i don't know like what i'm gonna face like i haven't actually played these players i see them but it's different when you actually in front of them playing them so it's all gonna be new and i'm excited though like and i i know i'm up for the challenge and i can I could be something special in the Big 12. Let's go. We're excited. I'm you're excited, the, yeah. The first seventh-year freshman in NCAA history, which is very exciting. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the mentality just, wise, yeah. yeah. No, it's going to yeah. be awesome. And and uh, I look forward to telling your story. I know you have a, a really tough upbringing. Yeah. Um, and and we'll dive into that more as we uh, get to know you better. But yeah. th thanks for coming in the studio, man. It's uh, nice thank to you. you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Dude, we're stoked to have Welcome you. Welcome to BYU. Yeah. Uh, Great to I'm have you, Eddie. Glad to be here. Let's thank you. Let's go. Eddie thanks. Heckard on BYU Sports Nation. Uh, fantastic interview, and I wish we could talk some more. But we got to go to break because we, we got to go to break this show. We got to go to break. Uh, men's hoops uh, needs a win at San Francisco tomorrow. Big game coverage begins at seven Eastern on BYU Radio tomorrow afternoon. Plus our fantastical Friday rise and shout out next. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. BYU Food To Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food To Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all-new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. This mid-sized truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. 
Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dowling Nissan Southtown in South Jordan. The heroes are taking over Saturday mornings on BYU TV. Heroes who are brave, smart, and wield magical powers. Heroes who are good friends, problem solvers, and kind to everyone. Heroes who work together to lift and inspire, to make someone's day. Watch your favorite heroes in action Saturday mornings on BYU TV. And then go be a hero yourself. Today was a great day. You're going to feel the energy of all these volunteers. I'm excited to get out into the world and see who else is making good. And you're going to meet some of the most amazing people. And we will all just lift each other up. What we do is we create memories for families. And you realize just how good people are. It does take a village. It's definitely been a journey. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. This program's on demand. Download the free BYU TV and BYU Radio apps. You can also subscribe, rate, and review to the podcast. It is my favorite time of the week because it's the time of the week where I actually have a lead in fantasy basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Before you ultimately win after the weekend. Uh, <laughs> this is football, I never felt that. This is typically uh, the scenario like, oh, yeah, feeling good, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. Okay, so I put up 109 points. Well, yeah. my players did. Uh, Lauren Gustin, a 48-pointer. Kaylee Smiley with 11. Rudy, 32 boosts, 18 parves, points, assists, rebounds, blocks, steals. Two men, two women, one opponent. I still got Khalil Shabazz in the uh, in the chamber as well. Yeah, and he's yeah between Lauren Gusson and Khalil Shabazz. Unless Gideon George and Spencer Johnson have their best games at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> You're, you're up uh, 12, 12. Uh, which is not a big enough lead. I need to yeah. be up like 30 going into the weekend to have yeah. a shot. Yeah. yeah. So congratulations on getting eight. No. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. Our question of the day. What? Which of the BYU football transfers do you have highest expectations for? Maybe it's Eddie Heckard, who we just talked to in the last Might awesome. be. Yeah? Let's go. Our Elite Voice of the Day, presented by PAX Healthcare Elevated, from at 2 underscore 6 underscore SECMO, says uh, Jay Hill. Jay Hill. There you go. <laughs> yep, good answer. Today's Rise and Shout Out, presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. All the kids in the record crowd of women's hoops yesterday. Awesome. Yes. Our thanks to today's guests, Lauren Gustin and Eddie Heckard. Sorry to Dennis Pitta, we ran out of time. For Jeremiah Spencer, shout out to Ricky Bauer. We'll see you tonight for BYU Women's Gymnastics on Daddy Daughter Date Night, 9 Eastern, live on BYU TV and Volleyball on the app. Let's go.